good afternoon good afternoon ma'am how are we good doing? afternoon ma'am how are we doing kaise hain sab log बाकी का तो पता नहीं मैं ठीक हूँ वीडियोज ऑन कर लें यस मैम यस मैम Yes, ma'am. Yes. So we should be talking about the effectiveness of e-resort, e-teaching learning platforms. So, uh, do we know apart from Zoom, what are the other uh, places where one can do e-teaching? Skype. Like Skype. That's what I know. Skype. Okay. Many people use Skype for mm -hmm. classes. Okay. Where well, Skype doesn't have any time limitation. I don't think so. It just requires everyone to install it mm -hmm. and have their email ID like registered on it. Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of like a group. Uh, just like Zoom only, you can add participants and. No, but is there any limit of how many students can, how many people can join Skype meeting? No, not that I know of, but mm -hmm. it's. Almost similar to what we see in WhatsApp or any other platforms, mm -hmm. like video calling. It's basically a video calling platform, so you can. No, I've done skyping before. I got into Zoom. We used to Skype, and uh, okay. now that you mentioned Skype, I remember that yeah, there was no time limit, but I don't remember if if there was any uh, uh, number limit. So I do have I a Skype. Think I is a we used to only Skype earlier. Skype. But uh, people said that Skype uh, was uh, using a lot more bandwidth than this one. I don't know why everybody said Zoom is better, so we kind of shifted to Zoom. But certainly Zoom has this limitation of 40 minutes. You want to use the free version. So, okay, Skype uh, is one. What are the other uh, platforms? Like what I normally see. Material share uh, is Google Classes. Yes, like Google. Google Classes is a paid uh, mechanism where our institutions have to subscribe to uh, And Skype limited 50. 50 group calls can be made in Skype. Okay. Now, because the other one is the Hangout with the university suggesting. Uh, but Hangout Google is also, uh, Google Hangout is limited to 25 participants. There's no time limit, but it is limited to 25 participants at one point of time. So, what else? Ashok, you were saying something? What happens is... Something called Hangout is an outdated platform and Skype is uh, for video calling purpose. So, uh, Zoom is especially developed for the conference economy. Me, hangout is not for video calling. It is video calling. It is. Ma'am, network is also a big issue, ma'am. Yeah, so in that's two things. In interior places like Bihar, it is very big problem. Network. Galaxy, Galaxy, can you put your proper name on the on the name tag? Whoever is masquerading as Galaxy, please put your proper name here. Is an option of renaming. That I can call you by your name. There's an honor nine. Please rename yourself. Ma'am, actually, what I see normally, uh, like while browsing through teaching methodologies. So I came across certain uh, professors mm -hmm. who uh, actually upload their weekly timetable online. Mm -hmm. And they also uh, kind of pre-record their lectures mm -hmm. and uh, 
uh, you know any resources for example if they have a presentation or any article which they want the students to read before coming to the class mm-hmm. so they share it uh, on uh, their university website dedicated pages and student can easily access the time table and the links of the lecture plus the resources both mm-hmm. so sometimes they pre record their lectures also mm-hmm. I'm alert to this. Uh, the university that I used to teach at, Gurgaon, uh, is learning management system where we could upload all the resources and also pre-record any situation, syllabus, timetable, and everything. So that not video calling, but then we used to put in all the resources and every kind of teaching. We yeah. used to call it learning management system. Yeah, because that's what the Delhi University has told us that go to the learning management category and where you upload your materials and things like that. And then, if you want a face-to-face meeting, then go to um, Google Hangout. That's what they are suggesting. And um, so, between the two kinds of things, one the the manner in which we have been holding our classes, of course, with the limitation of forty minutes, so which is everybody is here together, and then we hold the class together. and um, initially i did say that don't put yourself on video because i wasn't too sure of the bandwidth required for this but when i joined this other meeting with 1000 people and majority of them were on uh, on video so i felt that no i think our channel our systems can take the video on and last time when most of you were on video i felt it was it was almost like a physical class that we were having and uh, my personal preference is to have much more uh, live interaction with the students <coughs> rather than the uh, recorded version i've done that for uh, the swam platform for nalsa university and mo- quite a many of us did that so we pre recorded our uh, uh, lectures and then uh, there was a schedule uh, people who have the teachers who did, who were doing their professor course they joined in at your their conveniences and then they went step by step to do that but is that for me i do not know what the students received what were their questions uh, how did they respond to it and uh, there were just a couple of comments which came and they passed it down to us but uh, there was no live interaction with the students and for me therefore it was much more that what i have to say rather than what people want to know what my students want to know or what are the question they you know at which analysis uh, i found that the um, people who uh, joined that uh, uh, swam program it was a lot more like uh, they were also passive recipient because there was no active feedback from those uh, from from those lectures so people read it and of course at the end of the day they would have given an exam and got their certificate but for me as a teacher that's kind of much more a one way trans- transaction and communication requires that i should be having a communication a conversation with the students so therefore i prefer a skype and you know something which is much more directly in 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 real time rather than a recorded category but a combination of the two works but if it is only one and not the other then i think it's very very limited i request you all again to please switch on your uh, videos if that's a possibility with you yeah so do we have any other uh, understanding of we have now uh, the pre recorded videos what are the platforms where you can play, you can you can upload those videos one is that the university has a setup then you can post it there but the university doesn't have a setup then where do you post them uh in that case i'm on the youtube yeah youtube if you know you will have to create a channel for yourself okay is there any other place one can uh, uh, upload videos i have not i'm not operating um, uh, instagram whether that allows videos or it's only limited to pictures i'm on And facebook messages. also you can uh facebook i mean instagram allows videos and they have increased the time limit also now that they have introduced this igtv feature 
Mm -hmm. So you can upload longer videos of longer length. Mm -hmm. Also, ma'am, ma a blog also or a website can be created. Yeah. So uh, how do you learn? So as a teacher, how do we learn to make a website? Are there uh, resources available to learn how to make your website? Yes, uh, there, there must are. be, ma'am. Yeah, must be for hey. But has anyone? We anyone we all asked? learned. Whether anyone of I us. I did. Asked? Yes. Ma'am, I did when I was in school. So I think I can, if I can go back and revise, I think I can make one now. Yeah, I but think all yeah, of us. I remember I made one. Website. We should all make our own websites. And that's all. But then, uh, whether the, the, the websites you make at any stage, do you need to pay anybody anything? Yes, ma'am. We need to buy a domain name. Mm -hmm. And how much does that cost? Ma'am, it's been a long time. I need to recheck how much it costs for now. But how much it was when you did uh, check last time? Um, it was like 800 bucks back then. Yeah, it was not very expensive because we did look into yeah. that aspect for some of our uh, some other work we were planning to do. And I was quite surprised that uh, the website and domain names are not very expensive. Yes, ma'am, they are not. But whether these, uh, th this is not a lifetime payment or is it an annual payment? Is a monthly payment? That I don't remember. Um, that's, uh, there are sort of packages like six months, a year or... Quarter year. Ah, so this eight eight hundred or so is for uh, for a limited time. Ma'am, yes, ma'am. So it's not that once you pay it and it's not it's forever yours. No, that's not like that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, YouTube, I've kind of uploaded lots of things, and till now nobody is charging me anything. So ma'am, that's things. YouTube channel. Yeah, that's YouTube channel. Uh, website is like uh, vedkumarishstudents dot com. No, no, that's I'm saying that when uh, I am using the channel, I am not finding any difficulty in terms of uploading things. At one point yes, of time, they had this that no one could not upload more than 10 minutes of a video. But that's gone. I don't know why, why that happened and how that happened. But now I've uploaded videos of more than one hour old from where this, this class is on. So that's the one channel I found that you no, know, I don't have to do anything excepting to uh, you know, kind of register myself with them and then everything has been free. I do not know when people are viewing the videos, how many advertisements come in with Because it being a free resource, there's always advertisements. So I don't know whether any of you looked at the videos of your class or any other class that I've taken. No, I so whether no, they were, too. were there any uh, advertisements coming in between before, after? No, ma'am. No advertisements. Um, before, um, um, before the video, there were, mm -hmm. but not, mm -hmm. after, not but in, in between. between. There was no advertisement. So. Okay. Ma'am, the advertisement depends on the number of views the video gets. When the number of views increases, they insert the advertisement in them. Ma'am, so also how... there is an option. Ma'am, advertisement ka option tab aata hai ki jab hum video ko monetize karne ke liye opt karte hain ki do we get, uh, want to uh, this video to get monetized or not? So advertisement mm -hmm. uske regarding ki ma'am show karega, otherwise nahi show karega. Okay. So, right. Ma'am, but sometimes it's not your choice to, you know, to monetize the video, yeah. uh, to monetize your own video or not. Because YouTube, if YouTube wants to monetize on your video, it can do it. Um, exactly. It's not really your discretion uh, to, you know, monetize, monetize your own video, whether you can do it or not. You cannot do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, there was an option. So, I thought that if there is an option to select that, if we want to monetize this or not. So... मुझे लगा कि हो सकता है इसके लिए होगा कि अगर हम उसको ऑफ करते हैं कि मोनेटाइज नहीं करना है तो एडवर्टाइजमेंट नहीं मिलेगा देयर इज समथिंग आई हैव नॉट नो द एग्जैक्टली बट समबडी डिड से दैट इफ यू हैव अ सर्टेन नंबर ऑफ सब्सक्राइबर्स टू योर चैनल यस मैम देन यू कैन गेट इन दैट डिपेंड्स ऑन द व्यूज आल्सो 
Yes, ma'am. No, first of all, you need to have a certain number of subscribers to your channel. Yeah. And after that, there yes, are certain sir. options which I've not explored that uh, you can uh, make money by using the channels. And I do not know exactly what the terms and conditions of that one are because I've not spent time uh, in doing that. Um, but I do have a range of uh, viewing for different uh, videos I have. One has got crossed one lakh viewers and there are some which are with some hundreds. And of course our uh, um, class videos have got three and five also. So there's a whole range of uh, viewing the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the things I have. But we need to come back to, the, so, so for me, uh, the reference I was making to YouTube was that as an uploading platform, I found that this is without cost and very easy to manage. Uh, what I was trying to do was that if there is a continuation of my class, then I should be able to, because the, your class, for example, to our class has got three um, sub-meetings. And I want a student who starts with the first class should to go to the second class automatically, the third class automatically. And there was uh, a system there which said uh, uh, video, you know, so which, which video should flow. So a couple of times that happened, but any one of you who, sh who viewed the videos, did you find that you were able to go through the, all the three videos in one go, or you had to search for the second part? But well, that's where the whole point is, that if we are using YouTube as the platform for uploading our class, and our class is restricted because of the 40 minute limit uh, from Zoom, then for the viewer, they need to have the full lecture, full class of three or two or whatever that number might be. So when, uh, when you viewed, did you view the video which was in parts for the class or did you, uh, because there was only one which was a continuous one. But I think that is for uh, the LLB student that they had only one class was full one, uh, one and a half hour and it continued together. So when you viewed the uh, vid uh, video, was there a suggestion for the continuing second part or it wasn't there? You didn't reach there. <laughs> Ma'am, actually, but there was this option of the auto on the left hand side. Uh, what were you saying, honey? Ma'am, there was an option of autoplay when you actually see some somebody's video, then it actually um, browses through your history that what I what uh, things you are interested in watching, and it shows the related videos. And when I watch your videos, means two or three, then in auto in autoplay options they were showing your videos no but why you kind of uh, whether the options also we can do one thing yeah sorry man, sorry man. yeah uh, i was saying that whether uh, when you start when you're viewing because i did make connection for some of the classes and it was working then when i try to play it sometimes they were flowing in the sequence that i want them to flow and sometimes some unrelated video will just appear which wasn't a class continuation so what have been your experience that if you tried to do that that if there were three parts to a class whether all the three parts automatically came one after the other or you had to do a manual search for second part and the third part i mean in my case i did manage um, uh, you did yeah, it. it was kind of a playlist uh huh yes ma'am there there is an option to create a playlist for that yeah no but playlist and once you create the owner of that video can create yes, they the the, uh, the channel itself creates a playlist or you have to create the playlist yes yes ma'am no ma'am we, we, we don't to have to uh, create that playlist only the channel owner can create it uh, and uh, whenever when we click on the uh, first video the other video if we have uh, opted for auto back uh, auto playback so next video automatically play hota rahega, if we are having that playlist it's okay um those of you who came a little late we have identified skype uh, google hangout and youtube channels as the uh, zoom along with the youtube uh, uh, channel as the possible places how we can do our e-classes. E so in the case of Skype, the limit of participants who can come uh, together is 50. 
Mana did you know the Kirti? Kirti. You say uh, 50? I think, they, I think she's 50. The uh, limit of the people who can be on a Google Hangout meeting is 25. In case, these are, we are talking about free, free uh, spaces available. In case of Zoom, the limitation that two, uh, one limitation doesn't work, is, is not a limitation for us because our classes are not more than 100. So up to 100 people can join one meeting. The limitation on Zoom is the 40 minute break. But the good thing is that you can always continue it on the second uh, level. And on how many classes you can hold in one day, how many times you can hold the meetings on Zoom, the limitation. And up to three people, if you want to have a Zoom meeting, then there is not even the time limit is not there. We want to identify what are the, uh, in terms of communication. So one is that the, the other thing we thought was that uh, having pre-recorded lectures. So pre-recorded lectures, you the teacher does that, send the reading list. Then what will be the mechanism in those cases for feedback, for having an interaction? So Delhi University has suggested that first we send either a pre-recorded or a written lecture to the student and with the reading materials. And then we have to then we have to follow it up with the uh, Google Hangout meeting. For my both my classes in LLB and your PhD scholars. The number 25 is not uh, suitable because I have more students in both my groups. So therefore, for me, Zoom is the other better option. And uh, I found that by now people have become, my, my students have become used to using Zoom much more than trying a new channel. So anybody else who has any, any other experience about e-teaching and learning? Has, has any one of you done an e-course? Any e-course? Me, no, ma'am. From Swayam. Yeah. No, I did from uh, Swayam. There's this uh, Swayam website, mm -hmm. Swayam e platform, mm -hmm. introduced by M MHRD. So there was this course on uh, human rights, human uh, human rights, mm -hmm. conducted by uh, National Law University Delhi. Mm -hmm. So what uh, they did, they created this dashboard of their subject on the Swayam web e website, uh, Swayam website and they provided links to various e-resources. They also provided links to YouTube videos and uh, uh, they also uh, gave you free readings in PDF platforms. That's how they uh, went about the course. They made a plan, a week-wise plan, and they gave you assignments and uh, they, uh, they demanded those assignments to be uploaded by a particular period of time. And mm -hmm. then there, there were uh, weekly tests. In some courses, there were weekly tests and some uh, there were sort of a monthly end tests. So uh, mine was a three month, uh, three month course, certificate course. So uh, in the end, they evaluated your all the assignments that you have uploaded and all the tests and they, then they provided you with the certificate mm -hmm. given by the uh, Swayam website. Yeah, was there any feedback on your certificates on on your uh, uploading documents? Yes, ma'am. There was a feedback. Uh, the whole course is coordinated by uh, uh, maybe one or uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, and uh, one faculty. Sometimes uh, there were two faculties, one professor and one associate professor. There were mm -hmm. also videos where all these professors they they just sat down and they discussed about. Um, let's say hum human rights or any humanitarian crisis that is uh, happening around the world, and uh, um, they they basically they evaluated your work. You also yeah. had a platform where you 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 could you know just upload your any any query any problem and they they will uh, you know resp uh, respond to you within a week or so. Mm -hmm. Now I'm asking yes, you yes. on the submission that you made. What is yes, the kind of feedback that you got? Uh, Ma'am, like I'll I'll share one example with you. Uh, there was this assignment where uh, uh, the question 
uh, they were sort of framed like this that you uh, you uh, you had to talk to five uh, privileged children and uh, five non privileged children and then uh, you you had to you know ask them a particular set of questions and then you had you have to just upload those responses by the children and then uh, they will uh, give you a feedback uh, feedback like uh, that your responses recorded they were a little uh, they lacked some sort of clarity they uh, sometimes it was a, a good response recorded by you and there were feedbacks like you that's how you can do a little better in the next or in the future times so mm -hmm. there were some some feedbacks on your uh, Mm -hmm. assignment so yes, for your experience in going through that course and if you have done you know, we have got lots of diploma courses happening in person also so whether yes, you're learning in the face-to-face -face meetings uh, in what's in in a, in a doing a, a short course three months four months courses in face-to-face -face yes, meetings and in doing the uh, cases on the online what were the differences yes, that you noticed and in which respects you think they were the pluses of the e-course and these are the minuses of the e-course in comparison to the physical classes that we have had ma'am of course i mean where there is live interaction face to face interaction it is it is very helpful because there you can generate a new uh, new knowledge when there is a face to face interaction whereas on the satyam platform there is a set of readings there is a set of plan and you just have to stick to it you cannot you know bring in more information you cannot bring in more feedbacks or uh, you cannot generate responses in that kind of a, that kind of an e learning was whereas there any, uh, the kind of was there any occasion for you as a participant to interact with the other participants or have a look at what they have submitted no ma'am no ma'am so it there, was a one to one wasn't... learning it's one teacher yes, one, one to one so even yes, though the course by the teacher is being offered to lot many all, yes although although ma'am i remember there was this uh, little chat room created where mm -hmm. you know uh, all the students who were enrolled they they used to uh, put in questions generally i mean mm -hmm. uh, about the course or about any any particular topic given in the curriculum and uh, so in that chat room every participant who who uh, enrolled in that kind of uh, e course they could uh, just interact in that chat room only and ma'am i guess through that chat room we could uh, you know circulate our emails and then we can individually interact mm -hmm. with the, the other in the, participants in, in the chat room was there a time a slot there at which time everybody no, would know that there is a specific time and you can go and chat with the rest of the class or uh, it was just open and you would leave a message in the chat room and other will read and respond at their convenience ma'am uh, i wouldn't call i would now call it i wouldn't call it a chat room now i would call it a forum where you know mm -hmm. everyone could just uh, yeah, type in their comment mm -hmm. yes ma'am and then uh, you know if so, if somebody else is there online checking out mm -hmm. that forum he could he or she could just reply it instantly right right not not exactly a chat room okay. it is sort of forum yes ma'am okay. so not that instant mm -hmm. where uh, it there was some um, some symbol where it it could have been shown ki everyone was online or mm -hmm. these people were offline right not that interactive yes. okay yeah no we we did a um, e course for uh, judicial officers when i was at the academy uh, in collaboration with the commonwealth judicial education institute in uh, canada and in that we had created a chat room but we had also announced the timings that this will be the time in which the resource person will also be available to respond to an interact so there was a live chat so at that point of time anybody could write and, and if you know the, the teachers would also read the resource persons were also there at that point of time and we would respond right away uh, as a, as and when the queries were occurring and this was much more it was not oral it, it was written communication but live so that was one of the features we had uh, what we had was okay. podcast so we had recorded uh, um, videos of the judges speak this was on professional ethics for judges so we had series of videos which we had recorded and we will release one at a time and then there will be uh, followed up by assignments so there were questions uh, situational question hypothetical questions uh, framed 
and judges were supposed to respond to them. And then individual judges were uh, sent back in terms of responses. Their responses were not shared with each other. So that was uh, this certainly privacy out there. But judges, of course, had the freedom to look at the videos at any point of time during the, the time frame available. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, so we had an inaugural meeting. So everybody kind of was face to face and we could see who all were there. And we had a valedictory at the end of the uh, e-course e where we, again, everybody came in and saw that who all have passed the course. And the judge's response was that they found it very convenient because uh, it, it was much nicer for them compared to the physical training. But the physical training was happening always on the weekend. And that means that they would uh, be constrained to do it 10 to 5. But with the e-course, uh, the flexibility offered by the e-course was for them was very appreciated. But certainly they said that it cannot replace. Uh, E-courses are always to be in addition to, but not a replacement of the physical meetings. And um, uh, so anybody else who has an experience of an e-course? Uh... Uh, Ma'am, I did not do Swayam myself, mm -hmm. but when I was teaching, uh, I got my students enrolled in one of the Swayam courses for direct tax laws. Mm -hmm. It was done by a professor, Professor Sarkar, from the uh, University, Tejpur University. Mm -hmm. So basically, that was uh, in in a week. They used to have five lectures by me. One lecture would be there on Swayam, which would supplement my lectures. That is beyond the course, beyond the syllabus, whatever we could uh, they could learn on the Swayam platform. And um, at the end of the course, they had this uh, national level exam also, for mm -hmm. which they were awarded certificate. Okay. And in case they had any doubt, they could uh, mail it to Professor Sarkar. Okay. Yeah, so that's yes, certainly the, the, the other advantage, that one cannot physically go and uh, meet the experts on, this, on the subject in different parts of the country and the world, but through e-resources, one can reach out to them. We are doing these e-courses because we are physically constrained at this point of time. But uh, uh, if somebody from uh, Tejpur wants to attend my classes, that person certainly cannot do that because they will have their own classes happening. But if I was offering an e-course, and uh, for example, I got this YouTube, uh, and I put on all these recordings on the YouTube, they can passively watch what's happening. And if somebody, somebody did ask me one question on the, on the platform, saying that if this happens, for, if this is a gender justice uh, video, that there was a question about what will happen if the male was there in such a scenario. So I did get one query, but I'm not getting uh, any uh, queries, et cetera, from that. And I'm not even running it uh, you know, as a course kind of thing. I'm just kind of doing it for the students who are unable to attend these uh, lectures at this point of time for various reasons. Therefore, my, my reason for putting these videos up is very different than wanting to run a course as such. You want to run a course that's that you have to put an advertisement out there that there's a course that you can go through it, etc. And I think different kinds of setup we have to be there. So coming back to the uh, what we are doing, what do you think have been the good things in the manner we have run our classes so far? And if there is, uh, you know, there's a suggestions you have that what is it that we can do differently? Suddenly a pin drops. Ma'am, per, per, ma perhaps we can uh, uh, opt for I don't know, um, individual e-presentations on these platforms also where, you, you know, every one of us 